Today we're going to look at a really interesting repo, GPT Prompt Engineer, by the CEO of HyperWrite, which generates optimized prompts for a given task. Uh, this is an agent that creates optimal GPT prompts. Just describe the task, and a chain of AI systems will generate many possible prompts. Test them in a ranked tournament, gives them ILA ratings and such. Return the best prompt. This is by Matt Schumer, which is the CEO of uh, HyperWrite AI. The GitHub repository for this has a link to a Google Colab notebook. You can run it at the Google Colab. I will provide the link to the GitHub and the Google Colab in the description. We will be running this in Visual Studio Code to see what it can do. It includes many interesting ideas which you might find useful for your future projects, such as logic bias and other things. If you are interested in learning about GPT API and building AI powered apps, visit EchoHive AI Academy, where I have all my 140 plus free coding videos. You can actually search them for a particular topic, read their descriptions, watch them, and find the code download links at Patreon. The link is echohive.live. You can find it in the description under the video. Let's quickly run this and see what it does. I have set the um, number of prompts to three to keep it fast. So this is going to generate three uh, competitor prompts. In each round, we have the winner printed going through a tournament. This process can take a while, especially if you have many prompts to be generated. The candidate prompts, right? The competitor prompts. And also this can cost uh, quite a bit of tokens. If you change the models to GPT-4, and also if you increase the number of prompts. Okay, we are halfway done. It took about maybe 30 seconds. We are almost done at 93%. Our description is given a prompt, generate a landing page headline. So we are trying to get a prompt which generates landing page headlines, and we are trying to get the best one. So now, uh, if we look at here, we have printed the uh, table doesn't look very great, but we have three uh, prompts that are ranked because we did say it's to generate three prompts. And this is their ELO rating. They are ranked by ELO rating, and this is the best prompt. So we can actually just simply copy this. I have copied the winning prompt into GPT 3.5. Description is Echo Hive, which is my website. My channel teaches how to build AI powered apps. And if we click, unleash the future, master the art of building AI powered apps with Echo Hive. We can regenerate a response. So, this is a, a landing page headline generator. Unlock the future, master AI powered app development with Echo Hive's cutting edge training. Now, the GitHub repo states that the more prompts you generate, more prompts you generate right here actually gives you uh, better results, but then it's going to be more expensive and it's going to take longer. Let's take a look at the code real quick. Uh, so we have this pretty table uh, to be able to print this table at the end. Uh, and then we have OpenAI, TQDM actually allows us to print these progress bars. We are using iter tools and we are using tenacity with uh, rate exponential for a open AI call. And we have to define our API key. Then we have a system gen system prompt. So system, this is going to be the one that generates the prompts, right? You can read it more in detail, but it says your job is to generate system prompts for GPT-4, given a description and, uh, and some test cases. So... We just quickly come to the bottom of the code. You can see that the description is given a prompt, generate a landing page headline. This style of description tends to work well, he says. And test cases is promoting an innovative new fitness app smartly. For example, these are uh, maybe the content. These actually are the descriptions perhaps for a website. And we want to generate a, a landing page headline based on these. So this prompt is trying to get GPT to generate a, a prompt to be able to generate the headlines. The prompts you will be generating will be for freeform tasks, such as generating a landing page headline, an intro paragraph. Anyway, you can read this. Uh, inter interestingly, at the end it says, I'll put nothing but the prompt. Do not include anything else in your message. And then we have a ranking system prompt. Your job is to rank the quality of the two outputs generated by different prompts. The prompts are uh, used to generate a response for a given task. So you'll uh, so here is the interesting thing. So this uh, this is giving two generations, one for each system prompt, right? And I rank the generations in order of quality. So we give 
the GPT, the system prompt, and two, uh, two uh, possible prompts, generation A and generation B. So if generation is better, respond with A. If generation B is better, respond with B. So we do say that it has to be considerably better uh, and that, you have, that GPT has to be a harsh critic. Now, here's the interesting thing I just want to mention real quick. When we are making the get score and we are uh, actually giving the ranking system prompt to get a ranking out of GPT, we are actually here using, this gentleman has implemented a really cool thing which I've never used, which is the logit bias. So what this logit bias is doing, if you go to OpenAI's documentation, it modifies the likelihood of specific tokens appearing in the completion. So essentially, you can give it a score for particular tokens, and you can actually uh, completely remove their possibility of occurring in a response or make it so that it almost always appears in a response, see? such as values like negative 100 or 100 should result in a ban or exclusive selection of relevant tokens, right? Because GPT returns its response token by token, so you can actually set certain tokens uh, and give them a certain values and decrease or increase the likelihood of that token occurring in the response. Now, if you come back here, I mean, obviously, as you see, we are just making an open AI shared completion call. We are giving it the messages. Uh, and then we are defining the logit bias here as a parameter, as an argument. And why do we say 32 and 33 and we say those are set to 100? Well, 32 is the token number for A and 33 is the token number for B. If you actually go to platform.openai.com tokenizer, you can actually enter here some text. You see that this is exactly one token. And then we can actually look at the token ID. This is the token ID 32. And if we put here B, uh, capital B, then we see that its token ID is 33. So what's happening here is that we are assigning 100 to both A and B. So we are actually essentially making, almost making sure that the model will only return uh, most of the time, either A or B, that's it. We're also limiting the mixed tokens to a single token. Because if you look at that, because if you look at the tokenizer again, both A and B are single tokens. So I thought that was really interesting. Then we are defining a K, which is a constant factor, uh, 32. Can, our candidate model is GPT-4. GPT-4 are generating, is generating the candidates. Its temperature is set to 0 0.9. Generation model is set to 3.5 turbo. Uh, max tokens is set to 60. Temperature 0 0.8. Uh, we have and we try number of times to retry a call when ranking model if it fails. Ranking model is also GPT 3.5 with a temperature of uh, 0 0.5. Now you can obviously feel free to modify these. If you increase this to GPT 4, it's going to be more expensive and slower. Number of prompts is how many candidate prompts we want to generate for the tournament. You can read this here. And then we have a function, generate candidate prompts, which uh, actually makes a call and generates candidate prompts. Now, this part is important. As you see now, again, uh, just like here, up here, we have uh, down, as I was showing you the uh, logits, we are specifying an N argument. And if we go back to the documentation again, we see that N is how many chat completion choices to generate for each input message. I believe these are generated concurrently at the same time. So for, for a certain given amount of messages, you can automatically generate as many, I'm not sure if there's an upper limit, but uh, uh, many multitudes of number of prompts. So we are entering the number of prompts, which we set to three. So the generate candidate prompts will generate with a single call, three candidate prompts because we are using N. Then for each output, we add them to a list. Then we have a function which uh, has a calculates an expected score. And we have another function that calculates the ELO score. Okay. And then we have a get score function which uses a tenacity retry with exponential uh, back off. Uh, I've talked this, about this in uh, other videos. Like I said, you can find all my other videos at Echo Hive AI Academy at echohive.live. So get score gets it takes in the description the test cases, the list of test cases, right? The description is here, the test case is here. It takes in two uh, possibilities. Uh, which, which we're going to see how we get them. Uh, 
ranking model name and a ranking model temperature. Uh, you can see how we formulate the messages. We give it the ranking system message, the description, test cases, uh, and the two candidate prompts. And then here we enter the logic bias for the tokens for A and B and set them to 100 to increase the probability of them occurring so that the model uh, doesn't answer with anything else, hopefully. And we set the max tokens to one, so we only get a single letter, A or B. Temperature is set here, and then we just simply return the score. And then we have get generation. It simply generates and returns the generation. Then we have the test candidate prompts, which takes in test cases, description, and prompts. Prompt ratings are uh, uh, set to initialize each prompt with an ELO rating of 1200. Then calculate the total rounds for a progress bar, which we can use this with TQDM here, initialize the progress bar. And then for each pair of prompts, look, we are using an interesting tool from ITERTOOLS. This is a built in Python library. We are using combinations of all the prompts that exist in combinations of two. So, for example, uh, if you have three prompts, then we want to match each prompt with another without leaving any combination out. So uh, this can be an interesting, uh, this, can, this is an interesting implementation, which I'll be using in my future applications. So then we loop over the test cases, update the progress bar, get the generations, we get the scores, and then convert the scores to numerical values here. See, we check for A's and B's in the response. Then we average the scores, update the ELO ratings. I'm not sure how ELO ratings work, but uh, you can take a look at these functions here and how see how they are calculated. Uh, update the ELO ratings and then assign the prompt ratings and then print the winner of this round. Uh, we do this, otherwise we print the second prompt or there can also be a draw. Then close the progress bar, return prompt ratings. Then we have generate optimal prompt. <laughs> which essentially just runs the generate candidate prompts and then test candidate prompts. This is our main function, which we're going to run at the uh, very end to start the program. Our table is going to be pretty table, table field names, and then for prompt rating, then we uh, sort them out and then we print the table according to their ELO ratings. And the description is given a prompt, generate a landing page headline. You can change this to create an optimized prompt for your use case. You do have to give some test cases, for example, like uh, what kind of uh, what kind of website, what is, what kind of what what landing, what will be the landing page will be produced uh, for what kind of land? <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. What type of headline for what kind of website? Right here in the examples are promoting an innovative new fitness app. Why a vegan diet is beneficial, introducing a new online course, launching a new line of eco-friendly clothing, for example, and then we just simply run it. So this is it. Uh, I think this is really interesting. Like I said, I have a link to the GitHub repo and uh, uh, Google Colab repository. Feel free to check out the CoAI Academy if you're interested in building with GPT API and LangChain and JavaScript and all that. Link is echoive.live. It will be in the description. Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't usually make videos like this, but I thought this was a really interesting implementation. My other videos usually feature projects uh, and the code of my own writing. You can find them uh, in at the YouTube channel. I do have a, a trailer, a silly little trailer I made for Echohive AI Academy, which is going to play right after uh, this. Uh, it has music on it, so I try to make the music low volume, but uh, I just want to warn you, just in case, uh, there'll be some music coming up right now. Take care, and see you in the next video.